Have you ever done a class 5 composite filling only to realize that the entire filling just comes out in one piece and you are left wondering why did this happen? The answer friends on this episode of Tipsy Tuesday as I talk to you about NCCLs which are non-carious cervical lesions. These are typically of two types. You have either an abrasion lesion or an apt fraction lesion. We're all well versed that an abrasion lesion is probably caused because of friction from say a toothbrush or a toothpaste. Now it's very important for me to know this etiology because if I believe it is abrasion, I educate the patient the correct brushing techniques. But when it comes to app fraction, the thought process is very different. We believe an app fraction lesion sets in when a patient undergoes parafunction, which means the patient is grinding the teeth from right to left and the back teeth are in interference. It's important to understand friends that be it tooth enamel, be it bone, be it porcelain, be it periodontal ligament or an implant, all of these are very strong in compression which means axial loading. But these are all extremely weak when we load these in a non-axial which means a side to side manner. If you ask me what causes an app fraction, I'll tell you in my head there are two causes. One cause of abfraction is a patient where the canine is not doing its job of posterior disseclusion. So imagine a scenario of a patient who's bruxing and because this patient is bruxing, he or she has broken the canine tip down. When the canine guidance gets compromised, the entire bite force gets concentrated on a posterior tooth, a premolar or a molar, which then starts bending. And if the periodontal ligament is very strong, this is where you will classically see enamel prisms break off and then you get an NCCL or an ab fraction lesion, which is the reason why often an ab fraction lesion at the back is associated with an attrited canine tip at the front. If you want your composite fillings at the back to survive, first go ahead and restore the canine tip and you could very well do this in composite and it survives. Give the patient canine guidance because now when the canine is guiding, back teeth do not interfere, which means there's no bending, which means your composites do not debond. That's one of the reasons why app fractions occur. A second reason why app fraction occurs is because there is a posterior interference. The first reason means the canine is not providing the guidance the second reason is when there is a posterior interference. So if you look at this picture here, this patient has a lot of lesions, lots of NCCLs. I am thinking in my head, is this because of brushing or is this an app fraction? And a simple way of identifying the cause is to ask the patient to bite into MIP and then look closely. I'm asking my patient to grind the teeth towards the right side, which means purposefully make a right lateral movement. If these back teeth are all contacting each other, which means the canine is not providing disseclusion, these teeth are being forced to bend and an app fraction lesion steps in. If you only do composite fillings for the cervical, these fillings will come out. This is not a case of canine tip attrition, but this is a case where there is a posterior interference. If you extract teeth and your supra eruption causes an interference at the back, this will also cause an ab fraction. So it's important for us as clinicians to identify whether the canine tip is attrited or whether there is an interference at the back which is causing an ab fraction, thereby treating the cause so that the composite does not come out or ask the patient to go into a right lateral. If you see back teeth are not interfering, it is probably not an app fraction. It is an abrasion. So that friends is my tipsy Tuesday for today. Abrasion versus app fraction. Now I have some bitter sweet news to share with you. The bitter news friends is this is the last episode of season two of tipsy Tuesday. The good part is Tipsy Tuesday season 3 
is coming soon. But this Tipsy Tuesday season 3, I invite you to send me topics that you would want to see in a Tipsy Tuesday video. If you are being plagued by a problem or a concern or some step or some procedure that you are not sure of and you want more clarity on that, flood me in the, comment, in the comment section. Let me know what is it that you would want in season 3 and you might just find your request featuring in TST season 3. And guess what? Season 3 starts with an absolute bang because the first episode of Tipsy Tuesday season 3 is all about why is there food lodgement between teeth after crown cementation and what can I do as a clinician to avoid that problem. I hope you all enjoyed season 2. Do send me your comments so that when you come back in season 3, I might be able to abolish one of your questions, one of your concerns. As always, I sign out hoping to change your life in dentistry one Tuesday at a time.